Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a professor for social work management. And you are listening to Managing Around, the bi-weekly podcast about social science, culture and management. Managing Around is part of the Talk About Organizations podcast network, a community resource and discussion platform for key ideas in management and organization studies, which is supported by our listeners. Welcome to Managing Around, the podcast exploring the intersection of social work and management. In this episode, I aim to provide valuable insights and fresh perspectives, encouraging you to develop higher education didactics for social work management. I believe that an exchange of ideas and the sharing of knowledge are essential for achieving qualitative development in the field of social work and for preparing students to meet the so-called global challenges. Whether you are a social educator, practitioner or student, this podcast is for you. Join us as we dive deeper into this important topic and explore how to create a more effective and inclusive approach to social work management education. Without further ado, let's begin our journey together. When we think about a pedagogy of social work management, this story still needs to be written. It is groundwork. It is like gardening, which is the metaphor I would like to use today. We know certain plants, but there is still much to discover about their complex nature and the potential benefits they may hold for the development and cultivation of human health and the environment. Today, I will first discuss a specific plant, and a case, the German social economy. This is just one specific cultural and historic form of the voluntary sector. This will help us to understand the requirements for future social work managers in this field. We need to think not only about the plant, but also about the greenhouse where plants can grow. The greenhouses are the living laboratories, such as our higher education institutions, that offer boundless opportunities for discovery, innovation, and sustainability. When it comes to educating the next generation of social work managers, we must remember that it's a collaborative effort that requires a multi- and transdisciplinary approach. First, I'd like to discuss the question of how did a social economy evolve in Germany? I start with a brief overview of the origins and historical background of the German social economy, which can be understood as a specific case that may be replaced with any other welfare system when I will later talk about discipline-specific higher education didactics of social work management. Additionally, I also present a characteristic of the German social welfare system, which is the distinct system of financing social services within the social law triangle. The origins of the German social economy can be traced back to the early 19th century, a time of considerable economic and social change, characterized by the rise of industrial capitalism and the emergence of new social movements seeking to address the growing inequalities and injustices of the era. Early drafts of a social economy have been developed since the 1800s. For example, in Catholic social teaching, we need to mention the social and cyclical rights and duties of capital and labor. This work emphasizes the importance of improving the conditions of the working class people and it advocates for the rights of labor to unionize while rejecting socialism and unrestricted capitalism and affirming the right to private poverty. And there was also Leon Valras' idea of the social economy, which is based on the idea that economic systems should serve the needs of society through the regulation of prices, income distribution, and coordination of production and consumption, guided by ethical considerations and social responsibility. 
since the 1820s, the cooperative movement became stronger, which followed the principles of voluntary and open membership, self-organization, distribution of surplus and profits based on the cooperative activities and not the capital. But at that time, the German Cooperative Act did not allow to organize social services. Since the 1850s, we have seen a vivid institutionalization of social care through the organized diaconia. The idea of diaconia embodies the Christian principles of service to others, compassion, and justice through providing practical assistance and support to those in need, particularly to the most vulnerable and marginalized members of the society. About 1880 and 1890, it was Otto von Bismarck, the Prussian Chancellor, who sought to address growing social unrest and political pressure by introducing a system of social insurances to provide financial security and promote social stability. You've probably heard about the so-called Bismarckian social insurance system. And this includes a sickness insurance, an industrial accident scheme, and old age and invalidity insurances. This was at that time unique in the European context. After the World War II, there was a boom-like growth of the welfare state and thus of service providers. Full cost funding became the norm. This means that all costs of all services were financed by the state, no matter how effective they were. It was only since the 1980s and 1990s that this system of fully financing all services was restructured according to the principles of the new public management. New public management is a set of management principles aimed at improving the efficiency and effectiveness of public sector organizations by adopting private sector management techniques and practices. This includes, for example, that service agreements need to be negotiated between service providers and the state. The creation of a crazy market where social organizations have to compete with each other and the evaluation of the outcome and impact of the social service provision. Of course, I can only provide a brief overview of the development of the German social economy, but there is another characteristic, the so-called social law triangle. The social law triangle in the German social economy refers to the relationship between beneficiaries, social providers, and public funding agencies which is regulated by a variety of laws and regulations. And this is how it works. The service user seeking advice requests the service. The public funding agency has the obligation to provide the service. But it is the service provider who cares for the beneficiary. Service providers are in most cases non-profit organizations to a small extent also private providers and even public social welfare institutions. All costs the social service provider has in terms of caring for the beneficiaries are refunded by the public funding agency. This indirect financing system is the fundamental principle of the German social economy. Let me shortly summarize the German system of indirect financing social services involves the government providing funding to non-profit organizations and allowing them to deliver the actual services on its behalf while also regulating and monitoring their activities. This brings us to the second part of this episode, approaching social work management pedagogy. So far, I have introduced you to the characteristics of the German social economy. Now, we will build on that knowledge and raise the question of how social work management education can contribute 
to preparing students for leadership roles in social service organizations. First, with a focus on developing future skills, education should focus on the ground challenges. Second, the hybrid function of social work management highlights its inter- and transdisciplinary nature. Third, discipline-specific higher education didactics for social work management ensures the development of such skills. Well, if we talk about skills future social work managers need to possess to meet the significant challenges in our society, we can refer to the so-called future skills. The term future skills refers to a set of abilities, knowledge and competences that are expected to be in high demand in the coming years as technology, globalization and other political and social cultural factors continue to shape the workforce and society. These skills are often essential for individuals and organizations to thrive in an increasingly complex and rapidly changing world. In a 2022 systematic literature review, Kotsiu and his colleagues from the University of Cambridge aimed to provide a comprehensive overview of the different types of future skills, the so-called meta categories, their associated competences and knowledge domains. The researchers identified nine meta categories of future skills. For instance, high order thinking skills, dialogue skills, digital literacy skills, dealing with values, value propositions and ethics, self-management skills, lifelong learning skills, entrepreneurial skills, leadership skills and abilities related to flexibility in work environments, such as new work. And to address these skills in social work management education, we need to approach social work management from a multidisciplinary perspective. The need for a multidisciplinary approach to social work management arises from the complex nature of social problems and the diverse needs of the individuals, families and communities social workers serve. Social work management involves the coordination and administration of social services and their policies. To effectively address these challenges, knowledge and expertise from different disciplines are required. Some of these academic disciplines are these. Business administration, which focuses on managing organizations, including topics such as accounting, finance, marketing, human resources, etc. Economics, focusing on the study of how societies allocate scarce resources, such as public goods and services. Public management, which focuses on the management of public institutions. Politics and law, which focuses on the study of political systems and the principles of how to practice law. Of course, social work, which focuses on the theory and practice of how to work with individuals, families and communities to promote social change, solve social problems and enhance well-being. Sociology which focuses on the study of social behavior and relationships and institutions in society. Psychology, which focuses on the study of human behavior, motivation, personality, identity development, cognitive processes, and things like that. Educational sciences, which focuses on the study of teaching and learning, but also on the pedagogy and methods that could be used. Cultural studies, which focuses on the study of culture and cultural practices, sustainability sciences, which focus on the study of sustainable development, including topics such as environmental policy and resource management, and life skills, which focuses on the development of practical skills and competences necessary for personal and professional growth. The knowledge of all these disciplines contributes to the development of an awareness for social responsibility, social impact, and economic action.
eventually we need to think about the question of how we can develop, understand and apply these principles of each of these disciplines in our teaching and training of the future generation. Based on research in the previous years, I suggest a discipline-specific framework of social work management education. A didactics of social work management can be understood as specific general didactics, which is positioned between the disciplines, is characterized by certain didactic elements, is carried out by different actors, and considers the specifics of the professional field. First, the didactics of social work management is a specific topic in higher education that focuses on the principles and methods of teaching and learning related to social work management. General means generic, not related to specific contents and contexts, as well as specific, which refers to teaching and learning at higher education institutions and not schools or vocational training institutes. Second, social work management needs to position itself between the disciplines. These are the disciplines I mentioned previously. In other words, science becomes an object of teaching and learning. We need to support students and learning how to study and how to do research. Third, we need certain didactic elements, such as the selection and organization of content, the use of teaching methods and strategies, and the evaluation of learning outcomes, all of which are tailored to the specific needs and goals of the social work management program. Fourth, the practice of didactics of social work management involves different actors, including educators, of course, but also trainers and other professionals who are involved in the design, delivery, and evaluation of educational programs. Those experts transform scientific knowledge into teachable knowledge and do scholarship of teaching and learning. And finally, the didactics of social work management takes into account the specifics of the professional field of social work, such as the particular competences and skills required for effective social management of the organization. We are approaching the end of this episode. Let me conclude with the same metaphor I introduced at the beginning of my presentation. It is, in fact, the crucial groundwork that must be done to cultivate flourishing high education institutions that train future social work managers. In future, we need to think creatively about the development of the hybrid discipline of social work management. And through ongoing research and exploration, we can unlock the secrets and uncover new applications. Thank you for your attention. If you are interested in this topic, I would recommend a recent edit volume of more than 20 scholars from more than 10 countries that shared their approaches to social work management education. You find the reference in the show notes. Thank you for listening. Managing Around, the bi-weekly podcast about social science, culture and management. Managing Around is part of the Talk About Organizations podcast network, a community resource and discussion platform for key ideas in management and organization studies, which is supported by our listeners. If you liked this episode, please leave a review on your favorite podcast website. There's also a link in the show notes. If you've got any thoughts on this episode, or if you've got any idea about new podcast topics or questions you'd like to discuss, send me an audio file or voice note to hi at profmanagement.de. For any non-audio comments, drop a tweet or DM to at profmanagement on Twitter or Instagram, please. For more information, visit my website www.profmanagement.de. Thank you for listening and see you next time.